Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. Alright guys, let's get these things glued together. I got my spar in there. Now all that's for is to keep these from collapsing. That's all we need. And I'll put me a strip of glue right where these ribs are going. See, I ain't trenching these out on these. Don't need to be. Just take some more glue and make some heavier. And they just don't need to be. You know, you won't build these things tough enough, and that's it. Tough enough. Overkill is overweight. I just can't stress that. Well, we all learned it right here, you know. Okay, right here at this bearing, I like to put a little bit of glue around that just to, so it ain't just foam. Now this glue, or this concoction I got mixed up here, it's uh, my regular slow epoxy that I use for everything. And I got probably 80% micro balloons to keep the weight down 20% cotton flock for the fibers you know and uh, about like toothpaste enough to where a little pile will stand there without oozing out so it stays where you put it that's how we like it baby Super gush this on there either. Just a nice even coat. Pretty close to the edge. If there's any voids in your glue, you're just gonna have to fill them with filler. You know, if it's all glue, nothing to fill. You know, just a little stain there. You see them go all the way in there. I got these made just perfect, the right length. I'll just put them tight, snug, and that's it. Same thing on this one. You see when this voids, this glue is compressed, it goes into any voids we have next to these edges. It's compressed by the nuts and bolts I'm fixing to put in it. back edge I always leave a little bit of a gap there fill in with glue and that gives it a nice hard edge and that just works out just wonderfully
Bam! Burn it to it. Oh, wait a minute. Fix up my bearing a little bit right here. A little extra glue. Take it out, light and set of stabs I ever made. Oh yeah, going to break the four ounce barrier. These things are going to be like feather lights. You know, I know a lot of you guys are thinking, well, how do you know what is tough enough? Well, guys, you got to think about it like composites. You know, composite stuff just don't need the big framework a balsa covered plane needs, you know, frame built. If you're putting both you know, you're building a big old uh, frame structure and then composite too. Well, guys, you're just, that's just way, 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 way too much. You know, if you can keep it from collapsing and keep it from separating, just like I did in here with them two ribs, and just as light as you can get it and still maintain them two qualities. Keep it from collapsing. That's easy. You can use ingrained balsa for that. I use light ply, but you can use ingrained balsa for that. Okay? Keep it from wanting to separate. With them long spars, ribs, instead of just a little block of wood. I forget what maker was doing that, but they built this jet, made in flight, stabs flew apart. Where they had little balsa blocks in there with holes drilled in them. And all that wants to do is separate. It's, it's, it's whole life. It's just wanting to separate. Where these ribs don't want to do that. You know what I mean? So, if you can maintain your shape, keep it from collapsing, keep it from separating, you know, pushing the parts apart, then just as light as you can build it as light as you can possibly build it. And it should be good.
That is utilizing your composite structure. Otherwise, all this stuff's a waste. back on that B1 guys that is going to be one featherweight airplane I've just learned so much this past couple of years and it's going to pay off in the B1 big time be able to put a couple P60s in that thing <laughs> Alright guys, we're gonna let that bad boy set up and we're gonna pull it out live right here on YouTube on Bob TV. And you can see it win.